Thanks, James and Laura, and welcome everyone to the kitchen at Ballymaloo Foods. We're really excited to be here today. We're cooking up a Christmas feast. And um, we have our wonderful chef, Tracy Daly here, and Niamh from our team is also joining us today. Hi guys, so we're really excited. We have some delicious starters to make your life a little bit easier this Christmas. We have some yummy main courses with the main feature being a delicious turkey, vegan garland and all of the trimmings. Then we're going to move on to some delicious desserts, but not to forget Christmas morning breakfast and all those delicious bits and pieces as well that we bring through. Niamh? I have loads of questions for you, Tracy. so I hope you're ready. I look to it. <laughs> Fabulous. Lauren James, back to you. Lovely. Thanks, Lauren James. Back into the kitchen again. Moving on to the main event, which is our fabulous turkey. Things have changed dramatically, haven't they, this mm, Christmas? Yes. So it is a case that maybe the joints of meat, whether it be a turkey or if you're glazing a bacon, spiced beef, exactly what you said, uh, they're smaller joints, aren't they? Mm. Smaller birds. So today we are working on our beautiful turkey. So what do we need to do? So if I hand over my mic, is that all right? I'm Perfect. literally going to pull up my sleeves and get stuck in. So with our turkey, traditionally, we like to make a beautiful herb and butter stuffing. Um, and so what I want to start with is just take it out. So don't assume that the turkey is empty. Always assume that there may be something in there. Parcel of goodness. So a neck, gizzard, heart. Uh, it depends on what you're into. In here we have fabulous neck. So this makes a stunning um, stock. Really, really delicious. So for any of your soups after Christmas, pop in the neck the carcass when we're finished with it as well that will make a beautiful broth as well so that might take three days the size of this bird by the time we get through it uh, but remember always check inside the bird first okay? okay so today what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in a buttered muslin so that's going to help keep it moist because I think that kind of is the trickiest part of Christmas isn't it how do you keep that bird lovely and moist so there's a couple of different things that you can do one is buttered muslin so we'll do that in just a moment so what you do is you pop the muslin into melted butter and then you wrap the bird in that. Another way, and for some this is a, a bit trickier because it's brining. And the reason it's trickier is not because brining is difficult. Brining is very, very straightforward. It's a water and salt solution. The problem with it, the turkey is usually so big that nobody has a container to pop it in. So yeah, you want to leave it in it overnight. So for a lot of people, the choice of brining may mean that they need to go to a, a local hardware store and buy a huge big bucket Bush. to pop it in. But it's brilliant. Brining is delicious. It gets in lots of flavour as well with that salt and water solution. And it helps to keep that bird really moist at the end. Uh, another thing to remember with the turkey, basting continuously. So every so often you're going to see the juices collect around the sides and you're going to take a spoon and baste on top and allow that to flow back over, which and is really lovely. Tracy, with the brining, does it have to be brined, if it's such a word, uh, for a certain amount of time? Exactly. Overnight is sufficient. So it depends on the quantity of brine solution. Okay. So what we might do is we might actually pop that up. So we give the guys all the information on different types of brining. Okay. You can do brining with spices. You can do just salt and water mm -hmm. brine. You yep. can do a dry brine. It doesn't have to be a wet brine. Dry brine is really delicious as well. But no, really good question. There are timings involved in okay. that. And it depends on the weight of the bird. Mm. So to roast this in the oven, 20 minutes per pound. So that's how you calculate. So make okay. sure when you buy the turkey, ask them what weight it is, if it is not on it. Always allow a gap. So you know, as you pop the stuffing into the turkey, mm -hmm. you always want to be able to get your hand in there perfectly. Yeah. So the stuffing shouldn't come all the way to the roof of that turkey. Oh, okay. There should be that gap. Yeah. You want to allow for expansion. Okay. So the heat is going to expand the stuffing, but you need the heat of the oven to penetrate all areas of that turkey as well. Okay. Yeah, really Great. brilliant question. Well done, fantastic. So for our stuffing, in here we have some beautiful butter melted, our onions that we chopped earlier and yep. we sweated those down. So we need to okay. chop up some herbs so we have some beautiful thyme leaves. So what I might do is I'm going to take these away from you and I'm going to take that away from you and you're going to chop me some herbs. Fabulous. So we have some rosemary thyme, we're going to pop in some uh, parsley there as well, delicious. So if you pull the leaves off of those, um, so what we might do is pull the leaves off. So if you take those maybe don't concentrate so much on the stalks exactly oh, so a great way pull backwards so if you take the stalk and if you pull backwards you can release all those lovely leaves brilliant fabulous so over to here we have some delicious bacon so we have a loin of bacon here which is fabulous we have our loin of bacon that we pop into our saucepan we're going to cover it fully with cold water Lovely. and we're going to do 20 minutes per pound. Okay. So the cooking time per weight, 20 minutes per pound. So this is four pounds. Okay. So if we calculate that, then it's 80 minutes in the saucepan. 
Brilliant. Perfect. Cold water up to the boil and then simmer. Okay. And leave it on. That's it. That's it. The, okay. Exactly. Yeah. So one or two things you can do. You can use a skewer to check. So okay. if the skewer goes in and goes out really easily yeah. without hesitation, that's a really good indication that it's beautifully cooked. Okay. Then we have beautiful spiced beef. That's very Cork, isn't oh, it? It is very Cork. Very yeah. traditional. Yeah. Definitely very Irish. So it's yeah. beautiful. It's spiced beef. The reason this came about and the reason it's as popular today as it was back then, they started this in order to preserve meat. Okay. It's really, really clever. So it's a curing process okay. because they didn't have refrigerators or electricity, which is a time long, 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 long time ago. Yeah. Um, and as a result, they created this beautiful meat. Okay. So it's pimento berries, juniper berries, oh, wow. uh, cloves, um, black pepper. Fabulous. And so it's a dry brine. Yeah, okay. really delish. So it keeps the meat for months on end. Okay. Absolutely terrific. And once cooked, that will last in your fridge for a couple of weeks. Okay. How are we getting on? Uh, yeah, I'm getting there, Tracy. Fantastic. Fabulous. Pop that in here. Love it. So I'm now, sure if you pop in our breadcrumbs, and that's it. How lovely. Combine the two. And what must we do now, Neve? We have to it's let this. Cold. Yes, good woman. <laughs> So we've managed to do a lovely clean up and a tidy and we've had our meat on simmering away beautifully. And so we're ready to follow through on those. Neve, would you mind? I'm going to pop you your microphone. So we're going to start with, and Maxine, mm. shouldn't be too yeah. hot. Is that all right? Oh, Perfect. Yeah. So in here we have our bacon, our loin of bacon. And Neve, what I'm going to get you to do is glaze this. So we're going to score it and then Perfect. glaze it. So if I give you my microphone, yep. fabulous. So I'm going to pop that out of the water. Delish. I'm going to pop it onto that bacon tray. So we have our Ballymaloo glaze and this just makes it all so much simpler, doesn't it? Having that glaze in that jar Ready just takes the pressure out of it. And this is something you could consider. You could actually make this the day before. You don't have to do this on the day because I think on Christmas Day, it's really important to utilize your ovens as best as you can and don't overdo it at all. So this can definitely be done the day before. So you'll be yeah. having wow. a cold Thanks, Maxine. Um, problem. Brilliant. I'm going to pop this in front of you. I'm going to take your microphone okay. and we're going to score that fat. So what I want you to remember, Neve, I don't want you to cut through the fat fully. I don't want you to expose the flesh. I just okay. want you to gently score just for a little pattern. We're going You're to do diamonds. Too much no. <laughs> so no exposing the flesh, just a gentle score. Okay. So the weight distribution on your hand, not too heavy handed. Yeah, lovely, beautiful. And you want a nice uh, pattern to this, I That's presume. it. As beautiful as you can make it okay. would be absolutely okay. ideal. So the size of the dish that we've popped this in is just as important. The wider the dish, the more easier it is for that glaze to burn. And we don't want that to happen. The idea behind this, it goes in at 230 degrees for 15 minutes. Wow, hot. And as the glaze rolls off, mm. we want to catch it and baste it on top. So we want to create that beautiful, delicious layer system. Fab. Yeah, really good. So this product, absolutely stunning, ideal for it, but it also has cloves inside it. So okay. it's really, really, really rich and delicious. So for those that only like a little bit of clove, okay. you don't have to um, pop the cloves in on top. They Let's get four spoons on top. And the cloves are nice. Nice, generous spoons. Okay. Don't be so mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gorge, that's it. Spread it over, delish. And so we can come back, we're going to rebase it. What we want to do is create that layer system of that glaze on top. So it's going to take a good 15 minutes. So for the first five minutes, not a whole lot is going to happen in the oven. You're going to see that glaze come off, but the layer system won't come in until around eight, 10 minutes in. So that's why it's such a high temperature, just to create that layer. So in here we have our spiced beef and Maxine, you're making the accompaniment with this, which is really delicious. So for a lot of people, it's not cook this on the day at all. It's cook it the day before. So on the side, uh, you can eat it warm, but typically it's fully cooled. And for a lot of people, it depends on the size that they get. They would actually weigh it down just to compact it and then it's easier cut. For us today, we're going to serve this warm, which will be really nice. So here we have some avocado. Yes. We have some toasted hazelnuts, delish. So we're going to do a little sprinkle of salt, a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And then we're going to serve it with our beautiful spiced beef that we've cooked off. Fab. Okay. That's it. So okay. we're going to mix the two together in here. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to pop this on. We're going to let this rest. So it's been held together by lovely strings. So I'm going to cut that off and make it presentable and pretty. 230 degrees for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Love it. So we'll get a spoon ready for that. Ideal. Well done. Copy that back. Thank you. Fantastic. Now, spiced beef looks absolutely terrific. Beautifully sliced, thinly sliced. This is something 
you don't have to have on the day again it makes delicious sandwiches this meat along with our glazed bacon along with our leftover turkey they make an amazing buffet mm. so leftover mashed potato you can Some make potato into salad a, yes yeah. fabulous balimou french dressing on top oh yeah it's delicious a little <laughs> bit of balimou mayo mix that through a little bit of chopped spring onion my own personal preference which is really delish over here then we have our vegan garland so it's so pretty isn't it this is absolutely gorgeous so this is a real celebration of irish vegetables leek parsnip carrot onions garlic really delicious we have peanut butter you can use cashew uh, nut butter doesn't have to be peanut butter uh we have red lentils so the red lentils are cooked in a vegetable stock just to give that extra flavor which is lovely and then in the center we have brussels sprouts who doesn't love brussels everyone's sprouts favorite. everyone's favorite <laughs> the nation's favorite and on top we have beautiful smoked paprika bit of chili uh, tossed in that as well and then lovely wedges on the side how fantastic so Gorgeous. when we come back le pièce de résistance we have our beautiful stuffed turkey that if you can smell ladies is nearly ready to come out of that oven look forward to it lauren james back to you lauren james great to have you back it has been wild mammoth absolutely mammoth the ladies have been absolutely fantastic and as you can see the spread in front of you is glorious so everything is busy behind the scenes all coming together nicely now. So, Neve, over to you. Your glazed bacon. So, I'm so proud. Tracy. Yeah, well it looks done. I'm yeah. so delighted for you. Great color, beautiful yeah, garnish. It's so easy. Yeah, so isn't easy. it? Yeah, and yeah. so tasty. So this leftovers, sandwiches, buffet, salad, salad, anything goes. So the turkey we have out of the oven, the beautiful turkey with our muslin in there, and we've got beautiful juices in there. So we want to separate the juice from the fat. And how do we do that? So we're going to pour all of that off into our saucepan. We're going to give it a couple of minutes just to relax so that the fat rises to the top. A couple of ways to take that off. You can use a spoon, but it's beautiful. So don't throw it out. Keep it in a small bowl because in a couple of days, like our roast potatoes here, we use goose fat for those today. But maybe tomorrow, the next day, you can make beautiful roast potatoes using that turkey fat. Oh, so how okay. fabulous. So don't waste it. And what are you doing with the juice then? The juice. Great question. We're going to make delicious gravy. Now, controversial kind of like sherry trifle <laughs> you know how do you like your gravy uh it's different in everyone's house isn't it yeah, that's mm. true, yeah. so what i might do i'm going to add a little bit of stock okay. i'm going to reduce it down and i'm going to taste it once that flavor is really really beautiful and delicious i'll see if it's still quite watery i'll add a bit of roux so you can have a gluten-free roux or you can have plain flour butter roux whatever suits you in your household depending on dietary requirements so we'll have a quick look we're going to take off the muslin sounds lovely Actually, the smell is absolutely outstanding. I wish you guys were here. Okay. This muslin hear. is all new to me, but it's something I'm definitely mm. going to mm. try. Do try it. Yeah. Not essential. You know, it's perfect as it is. Beautiful. Can you see the shrinkage around the bone here? That's really what we're looking for as well. So the different signs that this turkey is ready. One is shrinkage on the legs. Two. So in between the leg and the thigh. So this part here. That's the toughest part of the turkey. Okay. So it's locked in tight against the breast. And so for you to find out whether it's cooked or not, what you want to do is pop a spoon in under here. And you're going to trap the juices okay so if the juices run clear no blood no red no pink we don't want any of those colors going on with our turkey then you know it's fully ready between to go. the leg and the breast that's it between mm. the leg and the breast okay. right in here yeah fantastic and you want it to be loose feel how loose that is do you want to try that for me okay yeah, yeah? Mm. you know it's cooked so the shrinkage on the leg it's loose to touch and the juices are clear fantastic beautiful so Maxine beside you there we have some beautiful soup that I know we're going to get to and we're going to looking at the garnish for that so really simple soup you can make it uh, a day in advance and okay. reheat just as you need so that takes a bit of pressure off doesn't mm. it yeah, okay. you don't have to make the soup on Christmas morning okay. you can make it on Christmas Eve and look at this deliciousness soup? The soup is a basic potato soup. So in order to elevate that simple plain soup, we're going to pop on some of our toasted hazelnuts, our avocado, and a little bit of the Ballymaloo fiery relish. So for any of you chili lovers, because we haven't brought it in yet, and chili is really lovely. I love it. I'll eat it every day of the week. Fabulous. That's it. So you're literally popping that on top. So you've got textures in there. You've got flavors in there. You've a really good quality extra virgin olive oil. You've a sprinkle of salt for seasoning and a beautiful amount of that fiery relish. And in front here, Maxine, we also have a salad as well okay, on the here. base. Yeah. Yes, really delicious. Last minute. All of those bits are ready to go. There is no cooking involved. Yeah. We've all of our uh, veg ready, which is brilliant. It has all come out at the one time. So we've been really, really busy here, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Any questions? Echo, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Bit of weightlifting, Tracy. <laughs> How to make this look good? 
beautiful. She's just wow. gorgeous. Ideal. So always rest your meat. The larger the joint, the larger the piece of meat, the longer you rest. So for a steak, five minutes. For a loin of bacon, 10 minutes. For a turkey, 15 minutes to 20 minutes, and definitely. Out on the counter or in a yeah. low oven or out on the counter? If you're lucky enough to have that extra oven space, okay. yeah, low oven True. is ideal. But if you don't, don't worry. You can True. do it out on your countertop. And yeah, do you perfect. put your tin foil over or anything? Just leave it as is. Oh, I would, you can leave as is. It's up to you, tin foil will work a treat. You don't want it to steam or sweat too mm. much. Um, so a bit of parchment it. paper over it okay. is absolutely ideal, yeah. Oven space is a challenge, isn't it, on That's, Christmas oh, Day? The yeah, juggle yeah, is yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all timings, isn't it? Yes. It's all timings. So I'm going to separate the juice from the fat, yeah. uh, and then I'm going to reduce it to intensify, and then I'm going to thicken a little with roux. So, Lauren James, that's it for the minute. But when we come back, we're going to have some delicious desserts to bring all of this together. Welcome back, Lauren and James. We've been working really hard here. <laughs> Tracy has us all exhausted. <laughs> Um, over to you, Tracy, to see what we've been doing. Sweetie, you're welcome. And I have to say a huge thank you to both you fabulous ladies for making this so possible. Thank You've you, You've been Tracy. fabulous. So if you look at our beautiful dining table, we have our deliciously stuffed roast turkey. We have some beautiful sides, lovely vegetables, our delicious spiced beef, our glazed ham, yum, our vegan garland, and then up here for the Amazing. end the finale i promise there's no more work so we have here a white chocolate fudge cake so in this cake and why it's so different is because i got carried away and i got to use this beautiful prosecco and cranberry sauce so the cake is layered with white chocolate fudge buttercream and then it has the prosecco and cranberry sauce in between the two layers and on top you'll see it is covered in that sauce absolutely delicious that white chocolate again like our pancakes from earlier complement each other so beautifully moving on over here got carried away again there may be white chocolate and cranberry in here as well so it's a white chocolate and cranberry bread and butter pudding with a white chocolate custard on the side absolutely delicious softly whipped cream a must for all of these desserts and le pièce de résistance again a little controversial uh, because trifle in every household is a little different isn't it so here we have sherry and cranberry trifle made with the Ballymaloo cranberry sauce again I know ridiculous I got carried away and I loved it thank you Tracy <laughs> and thank you everyone for joining us here today uh, we've had a lot of fun um, Everyone's getting some Balmaloo products in the goodie bags, so including you, James and Laura. So I hope you enjoy. And um, we just like to wish everyone a healthy and safe Christmas this year. Thank you. Happy Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Merry Happy Christmas, Christmas, everyone.